Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha. This is Rabbi Simon, and we give thanks for God that He's brought us through this week and this whole week. We thank you, Abba, that you brought us through the week with your faithfulness, with your love, and with your everlasting covenant with the house of Israel. Father, we thank you that you took us out safely and you brought us back in safely, that you fed us, that you put a roof on our head, that you provided the transportation, that you provided the food that we needed to eat, and any other facility that we needed to have to come and go, that you provided for all these things, that we thank you, that we bless your holy name, and we ask that those that are ill and those that are suffering that you will completely finish their suffering, you will heal the sick, and you will make those that need to know your name, your name be visible to them. We ask this, and we pray this in your Kadosh, in your holy name. Amen, we amen. So i like to thank you for listening to Rabbi Simon and uh, it's been an eventful week I guess uh, a lot of things have happened especially in the Middle East where there is an ongoing war uh, as I said last week that first of all I'd, I'd just like to give an opinion and this is by the way my opinion uh, not necessarily anybody else's opinion and not endorsed by anything but I put this opinion out uh, based on my personal observances in the Middle East and what's happening around about. I think it was a very bad idea for Israel to go into Gaza. That was an absolute disaster waiting to happen. And as can be seen, it is a huge disaster. Their army is not equipped, or maybe they are equipped, but they're not capable of taking the people that they were fighting completely down and they have been you know their tanks have been obliterated their vehicles have been destroyed many many soldiers have died by the way and they won't tell you this in the media because they're trying to make Israel this you know super army that they are not they are not a super army by any standard as I said this many times before and I said it again and again that Gaza is not part of Israel's land and even though at some point in history we may have acquired it but we gave it again again and we gave it away we, we let it go because it was not meant for us it was a land that was lived by the Philistines in the ancient past and before the Philistines it was occupied by the Canaanites and therefore God has never rubber stamped Gaza belonging to us it's never been rubber stamped now if anybody thinks so, i like you to show me in the Bible with references where it says that Gaza belongs to Israel. And uh, I'm sure that you're going to find difficulty in proving that. Now, we, we are not ignorant by any measure. We know what's going on and we know how God acts and deals with people. As I have said this, there is no Torah government in Israel right now. And you cannot tell me that Israel will win victory when there's no Torah government. And we are beginning to see that. And I, I am hoping that you will begin to see that, that it's not a win for all, for Israel every time they go to battle. In fact, they have been given a lesson in history that I think will be written down in history and remembered for a very long time that you know what has happened today is is been a total and utter disaster and Benjamin Netanyahu's government is totally totally ignorant and foolish that they tried to take this operation as some kind of a you know Rambo style and they don't know there's too many Rambos at the other end taking their tanks out Excuse me. Therefore, I think, you know, if you're not watching, actually, actually, even BBC, even BBC put out how they tried to, the idea of they tried to, uh, 
what did they do? <laughs> they, they tried to make a scene like they they f- tried to fake a movie by placing guns and, and some ammunition and saying that there were Palestinians here in the hospital when actually the there was a difference between the original footage and the cocked up footage. You know, there was a quite a difference between the two. Uh, one rifle versus two rifle and uh, uh, you know, different placement of the guns and, and of course the, the time on the, on the watch of the soldiers uh, showing that it was all uh, staged. The whole thing was staged. So this is why I said is, 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 it was a disaster and many nations have seen this and I can tell you this much. If 52 nations in the world, forget about 52 Islamic nations, if only five powerful Muslim nations stand up to fight Israel, they will, they will flatten Israel. I'm telling you, they will flatten it in no time. But with America's help, sure, with America's help, America might be able to defend Israel and save it. But hey, let's, let's be honest. Unless God is on our side, we will not win any battle unless God is on our side. So I think there's a lot of repenting that needs to be done. I think there's a lot of uh, soul searching that needs to be done in Israel. And as I've said this before, that this idea that the Messiah will come and solve everything is, is a total, total brainwashing that, you know, the media, not so much the media, but the church media does. And it is a brainwashing because what needs to happen, we need to take care of the things now not in a thousand years time and not in five thousand years time we need to take things now and we need to sit down and we need to work out a peace protocol between the people that we're trying to coexist with so that there be peace between nations and when the messiah comes then there will be a torah government there will be a restoration of the temple which we call the third temple that is yet future there will be a restoration of the tribes that is yet future so Putting it into perspective, I personally do not think for a second that any sane Jewish person will endorse what's going on in Gaza today. I don't think so. However, not only to say that many Palestinians have been killed, but many Israelis have been killed, killed as well. Jews have been killed as well. And I told you before, and I think I did say this, in one of my writings in the past that Jews will leave Israel because of security concerns because they will realize that there is no security there and that we are beginning to see today we are beginning to see it already there is already exodus of Jews out of Israel and there will be an exodus more of Jews leaving Israel in the near future so that's basically the the sum total of what's happening in Israel right now the leadership is Listen, there, there are leaders in Israel that are very right-wing, are very, very uh, wrong-minded about their opinions and about their ways to handle things. They do not see the Palestinians as human beings. And I think that's rather sad. That's very sad when you do not see the other people as human beings, as, as maybe just cattle and you know fodder and just to, to kill and run over. I, I, I definitely do not support that. I am not in that in that camp. I see everybody as a creation of God, and I see that we as human beings can live in peace, and we should endeavor to live in peace. I know, I know that we may have enemies. I know that, but it doesn't mean that we will win everything by war. Some things can be negotiated with peace. Other things, maybe you know, yeah, there may be a, a war to do things, and we know there's going to be a bigger war to come yet. And, but then there will be peace. So we should always strive for peace. We should always pray for the peace of all people, including Jews, including Palestinians. It doesn't matter just because, you know, some people, just because some people in the Palestinians kidnapped and, you know, took away certain people as hostages, I think that that blowback was meant, was going to happen. It was going to happen. Why? Because what Israel had done over there, which nobody speaks about. So I don't think Israel is, is the innocent party here. It never was. And uh, I think we need to see things in proper context that Israel really needs to do some soul searching. I'm not talking about Israel Jews. 
Doma Israel leadership. Is Israel leadership needs to do some soul searching, and they need to find viable ways of peace. Because if we don't seek peace, then peace won't find us. Uh, war is not the solution. Just because you have many bombs doesn't mean you can achieve peace through bombing other people. You can't win people by bombing them to submission. By the way, America tried that in Afghanistan. Look what happened to America. They, they all ran back home because they didn't win that. They didn't win that war. It actually was a losing war. America bled slowly to death in Afghanistan. And look at how much debt America is carrying today as a result of all those wars at the fort. It didn't help anybody. It would be much better for American people to be given tax breaks, to the interest rates be lowered, and uh, for more jobs opportunities, business opportunities to be created in America. With all that money that was funneled into wars, it would be much better spent on Americans at home. Because when Americans are prosperous, then Americans will support their government and then Americans will be able to support other people. So I recommend highly that even we as Americans <laughs> look at ourselves and you know say enough is enough, that we really need to seek peace and not you know support people for war. I definitely think that the present government is, is not in line with making the right policies for peace. I think that a new government is needed and will be coming forth and it won't be a democratic government. It may be a totally different Republican government. So with that in mind, let's move forward and uh, talk about scripture, talk about the goings-ons of uh, uh, the what the scripture states in different areas of our life. And I wanted to go straight to the... I wanted to make this a practical, a practical lecture to teach you how to better month of your lives. I also wanted to uh, give out uh, prayers for uh, a student of mine in London who is uh, uh, right now, you know, having a little bit of a struggle. Uh, not, not nothing, nothing uh, out of the ordinary, but nevertheless, you know, uh, he is having a little struggle, and uh, God will will protect their family and, and bring them to whole whole wholesome wholesome health soon so it's a good thing that you know I am here and able to guide my students into what they need to do in order to find quicker cures rather than get stuck in long queues and a list of medication for the rest of their lives I think that's just uh, difficult for many people to, to you know handle so with that uh, I'm lifting that family up in prayer and petition and God will see them through. I'm lifting all of my other students up in, in prayer and petition who are in travels, those that are seeking employment, those that are in employment. I am lifting you all up in prayers and petitions that God will reward you with the blessings as you go your way and as you support the work of God to establish true peace on this earth not this imaginary peace, but true peace. We're not asking for peace through submission, through war, killing people, and we're not in, in, into that camp. We are into the camp where we petition to God to guide us and with wisdom to negotiate and to have peace, real peace in our lives, in our families, and also for the Messiah to come and, and build a, a proper Torah, merciful, just government. So, I wanted to talk about uh, some of the verses in Scripture which talk about certain things. In the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 1, we are told that Ezekiel was there and God gave him a vision. And it says, as forth, it says it was by the river Hevor, it says on the fifth day of the month, which was in the fifth year of King Yehochin's captivity, the words of Yudhevah came expressly to Yehizkiel, the priest. He was a prophet and also a Levite priest, the son of Buzi in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Hebar, 
and the hand of Yudhevahe was upon him there. Then I looked and behold a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it and radiating out of its midst like the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also from within it came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Each one had their four faces, had four faces, and each one had four wings. Their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like the soles of calves' feet. They sparkled like the color of burnished bronze. The hands of a man were under their wings on their four sides, and each of the four had faces and wings. Their wings had touched one another. The creatures did not turn when they went, but each one went straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. Each of the four had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces. So what I see here mystically, mystically, this was a vision shown to to, to Ezekiel the prophet. But what I see here myst- mystically, what God is showing us that as men, men and women of course, when it says man, it also, also includes women. Man, man has, you know, there are four natures shown over here. The nature of a, a a lion means very strong, judgmental, being on the right. Then it says that that uh, on the left side, on the on the left side it mentions an ox. Left side is for mercy, and the ox is basically an animal that chews the grass, chews the cud. So that's the merciful side of man. You know, you can be like that. Or you can be on the right side with the face of a lion. You can be an angry man. You can be a a bashful. You can be arrogant. You can be a judgmental type person. Then we are also shown that there is a face of an eagle. So a man can be like an eagle in that he can fly high. The wings stretch upward. Two wings of each one touch one another and to cover their body. So you can be like an eagle and you can fly high. Means you can get any desire that you have in your life. Any desire that you want can be yours. But the problem is a lot of you are still struggling to produce your outcome, you know, produce your desires. So how are you going to get there? I mean, that reminded me of a story of Yeshua, Jesus, when he was in the book of John, chapter 5, he goes to Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate and in Bethesda, he, he is there and there is a, there, there are many blind, lame people, paralyzed people waiting there, uh, waiting for the moving of the water because an angel comes and a certain time moved the water. So there was one man there, certain man, and he had an infirmity. He was lame or some, some kind of infirmity for 38 years. And it says that when Jesus saw him, when Yeshua saw him lying there, that he knew he already been in that condition a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? Then the sick man answered and said, Sir, Rabbi, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, while I'm coming, another steps down before me. So this man, (laughs) it's kind of funny in a certain way, this man could have asked anybody to move him to the water prior to the water being stirred. In other words, he could have been close to the water, but it never incurred, occurred to him that, hey, I want to be close to the water so I can just just drop into it when the angel comes. No, for 38 years, he just waited for somebody else to help him. This is the state of many people today. You know, he could have crawled by his tongue, you know, to, so to speak, to get into the water, but he didn't. For 38 years, he just waited for somebody else to come and push him into the water. Come on, you know. How lame is that? That's so lame. You know, where Yeshua says to him, Jesus says to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. As simple as that. Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately man was made well. So it illustrates a point. If you're going to keep relying on somebody else to come and lift you out of your quagmire, you're never going to be lifted out. This This was a state of this man. So, you know, if you want to fly like an eagle, would you be waiting for somebody else to lift you up? No, because this is why I said, 
that I've given you the tools and techniques, but I'm pretty sure so far, so far that you know a lot of you are still struggling. Either you are not being, some of you perhaps are sincere, perhaps you are faithful, perhaps you are doing the things that you are asked to do. Others of you are just are not there. They just give up. They start one day and third day they get tired and they stop doing the things that they are told and then they're like this lame man. Then they're waiting, they're going to wait 38 years for somebody to come and push them into the water. That's going to be your story. I mean, do you want that story? Do you want to tell, be telling that story to your grandchildren? That I was, you know, waiting for 38 years before my, my the waters moved for me. No, you don't want to be in that condition. So today I'm going to spell it out for you a little bit. And the way I spell it out, if you follow it, maybe you'll get somewhere. Because here is a problem. Problem is that most of you are walking in low vibration, low frequency. Because you're walking in low vibration, low frequency, you do not meet the frequency of God. God is high frequency. You're not meeting high frequency. Because you keep walking in low frequency, in victim mentality, and you know, oh, white man did this to me, and he, you know, the other guy did that to me. You live in that mentality. So that mentality will get you nowhere. It will keep you in low vibration. You will never get off the ground. You'll be like this this lame man for 38 years waiting for somebody to come and lift you up. So you don't want to go there. Listen, the reason why a lot of you are not meeting the goal, meeting the mark, meeting the Torah, is simple. You're not doing the, You're not doing the exercises properly. And I don't speak to all of you privately. I do some to some of you, but not all of you. So let, let me give you a story. Unless you walk in power, unless you walk with high frequency, you're going to be just sitting there like the lame man, waiting for somebody like Jesus to turn up. You know, somebody, a mani- master manifesto to turn up and, and, and give you a hand. Listen, last week on my desk, I, you know, there was a, there was a hit in town. You know, there was about, I don't know, six, seven men. And they were killed outright, shot down. You know, it was like a, what I call a, a, is, is called, I'm trying to find the English word. I know the word in my language. I'm trying to find the English word for it. It was a hit, basically. It was a paid job. Somebody paid somebody else to kill these people. They were all part of different gangs. Anyway, I saw the pictures of that car. Can you imagine? I, you know, I don't work for the police, but I saw the pictures of that car with the bullet wounds on those men's faces, how they were shot. And, you know, I made a comment when I saw the pictures. I said, you know, these people, they got trapped in traffic in their big big car, in their, you know, land cruiser, and I said they, sh- they were in the wrong car. They shouldn't have never been in that car. And they should have never been in that area. Maybe they were okay in the area. But if they had a faster, smaller car, they could have saved their lives. You know, they were attacked by uh, gunmen with rifles, machine guns, you know, on, on a motorcycle. And they, they just cornered them in traffic and shot through the, the Toyota Land Cruiser and it, my goodness, the, the man's neck right was just opened with bullets on one side. They killed the driver. They killed all the passengers in the back. It was a bloodshed, real bad. Anyway, I kind of felt sorry for the people who got shot. But, you know, speaking to the wife, I was saying to the wife that, you know, on one side, I'm saying that I'm sorry for the people who died. I mean, they were, they were kind of like gangsters as well, rich gangsters. And somebody else who, who killed them apparently was a friend. Listen, it was a friend. The friend of this gangster got angry with the gangster because they said something to him he didn't like, and he then put a hit on his friend and had him knocked out and taken out. So I said to my wife, on one side, we have the people of this family. Seven or eight people died in that car. And I said, I feel sorry for them because today somebody's father somebody's brother, somebody's husband is dead. On the other side, you know, these people's families, they will be crying tonight. They will be mourning their death. Then you have the other side, the friend who had them killed. 
I said, they'll be celebrating. I said, look at the irony in this. One side, you have people who are crying and moaning. On the other side, we have people who are happy and joyous because they killed somebody. I said, this is the kind of world we live in. And I said, I'm not trying to say that this world is bad, but I'm trying to tell you that there is a balance of evil and good. And always there will be a balance. There will be equal number of evil people and there will be equal number of good people. And so, as much as evil is done, then good is done also. And this is how God maintains balance in the world. Therefore, we can't say, oh, the, everything in the world is bad and evil, because where there is evil, the only way to know good is by having good people do good deeds. That's the only way to know good. Now, so it was a, a fine example. Listen, listen to this. I had a whole police team come to my house. <laughs> and I, want, I don't want to bore you with the whole story. They came to my house, about a dozen of them. And I took pictures with them. <laughs> yeah, they became my friends. I took pictures with them and I, and I gave them cold, you know, cold drinks, crisps, things like that. I just sat them down and they introduced themselves to me and I introduced myself to them and we became kind of friends. They were doing a shoot in the area and real policemen. And this was a, like a, in charge of a, a local police unit. And this man was in charge of the local police station. And he was here and he shook hands with me and, you know, I gave him a, a little gift as well. And, uh, we, you know, we had a, 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 you know, a friendly discussion. It was a nice discussion. But nevertheless, my point is this, that I have very good relations with the police and with, with the military and with everybody else over here. So my point is this, that the only time you, ha you have these things happen to you is when you walk in blessings, when you walk in power, when you walk in high frequency. That's where you should be. And if you're not there, then you're doing something wrong. If you call yourself in Torah and you're not having good things happen to you, you're doing something wrong, sir. I'm telling you. You've got to fix yourself. You can't be like that lame man sitting on the pool waiting for uh, Mr. Jesus to come and lift you out. You know? You can't be waiting for Jesus. You better start lifting yourself out. You have the ability. What did God show Ezekiel? God showed Ezekiel the four sides of man. You can be flying high like an eagle. Are you going to fly? Are you going to stay on the floor? So this is how you do it. Listen, the biggest and the fastest way that you can go up in life, the fastest way, you're not going to believe this, but I will tell you, I will show you today how you go fastest way up in life. You got to be a giver, not a receiver. You got to be a giver. Now, of course, when you give, the only way you give is by receiving. But if you're being stingy about your giving, you will never receive. You will always be short and you'll always be crying as a crybaby that you don't have enough money to pay your bills. Why? Because you're not a giver. What did Jesus teach? A lot of Christians need to be taught and they fail to understand the lesson. Jesus said, it is better to give than to receive. Now, how can you give when you don't receive? Means that automatically, automatically God will send you resources, money, wealth, material things to give to others. You can't be a giver without receiving, right? So, but first, you got to be a giver. I know majority of you don't even tithe. I know majority of you don't even know what the word Zadaka means. So, when I speak about the word tithe, it's like a, a you know, five letter hate word to you that's my problem so you got to switch that around you got to understand it's not a it's not a hate word it's actually those who give will receive and those who don't give will not receive now how does that work listen last week alone i don't tell you the things that i do last week alone in two families there was no food in the family okay there was no food in their house they had nothing to eat, little children. And, you know, the girl contacted me and said, uh, Sir, you know, I have no food in my house to eat. I had some guests come in, the food that I had, they ate it and they left. <laughs> and I got nothing left now. I don't even have money to buy more food because I'm off my job for a, a, a number of weeks because I broke my foot 
and I can't go to job for another, I don't know, three, four weeks, whatever it is, five, six weeks maybe. And so she said, I have no food. I said, okay. So I sent that family, I sent that family over a hundred dollars for just getting their ration. A hun- just over a hundred dollars, 150 somewhere there will buy them ration. And it may be, I don't think it lasts a month, but it'll at least maybe last close to three weeks. So I did that for two families, okay? Yesterday, a family came to me that they're going to cut their, their electric meter because they hadn't paid the bill. And they, and they didn't have bill money. They wanted $150 bill money. They already gathered about $100. They were about $250 bill. They had their $150 short. And they came to me and I said, what's the matter? They, they, they told me that if we don't give the money tomorrow, tomorrow is the last day, our meter will be cut. And we already have no electric because they cut the electric. They're going to take the meter away and we will be without electric. And our fridge and everything will be just, you know, food will just go away, go bad. And please, you know, help us that we may be able to meet our bill. That we will, and, I, and I send them money. That is me. If I can do that, then, you know, I, I want you to learn something from me. To walk into power, learn to be givers. Learn to be givers. If you don't pay your tithes and the car, shame on you for even listening to me over here. You shouldn't be listening to me. You should go and maybe part of some other church. You're wasting your time because you won't get nowhere. Because until you put Torah in perspective, until you become Torah observant, until you say to God that I'm going to walk with you and I'm going to do what you ask me to do and I'm going to be covenant oriented, then God will lift you up. But are you doing that? Most of you are not. Most of you just listen from here to the cat man do and you don't do nothing. You just treat it like a, a show, like a social gathering. It's not a social gathering. You know, if I don't receive, how am I supposed to help these people? When they come to me, what am I supposed to say to them? Oh, my students, they're not helping me. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Was, is that going to put food on their table? What kind of person would I look like? I look like a hypocrite, won't I? That, you know, I'm trying to put food on my table and not on theirs. Come on, you know, let's grow up. Let's grow up and, and see covenant of God as it should be seen. Torah is a covenant. We are a covenant people. We cannot just claim to be in Torah and don't do the things that are required of us. We must do them. And that's when God will give you the power. That's when you will go in high frequency. You want high frequency, high power? You got to be giver. Start giving. And this is how you're going to be, this is how you're going to start manifesting. How you're going to start manifesting is when you're in high frequency. When you give, you can only give what God gives you. In other words, God can only increase your, your, your stature, your wealth, your substance when you start to open your hands and not close, clench your fist. So do, do that. That's the first secret. Be a giver. Second secret. You in your, in your body are walking in 3D. Means that 3D is the area of physic, physicality. Problem area, physicality, illness, other things that happen to you or health or relationship, everything. That's 3D. Now, if you have a problem in 3D, you will not be able to find a solution in 3D for it. In other words, you cannot get a, a solution to a problem from the area that gives you the problem. So if your 3D can give you a problem, how do you find a solution? Well, guess where you go to? You go to your 4D. What is the 4D? 4D area is the area where you receive solutions. Then there's a 5D. What is the 5D? Well, 5D is the area where you do the prep which allows you to receive the solution in 4D. So how do we go about doing this? Well, these are little secrets for you. In the, you start with the 5D. You do not start in the 3D. Most of you are failed. Why have you most of you failed? Why most of you failed to manifest lottery jackpots? Maybe cars, maybe houses. Do you know why? Because you did not do the 5D. You, you did the 3D. You continuously... You're continuously living in your 3D. You're trying to imagine you, you receiving money, cars, houses in the 3D when that's the area of problem. That's why you are all failing. Majority of you are failing because of that. So where, you, where do you need to be? Think about it. 
Now let me give it to, give it to you in another way. If if you in your entire life have not earned more than fifty thousand a year, do you think that you are ready to receive a a, a million dollars? Think about it. If you've never seen more than fifty thousand dollars a year, can you receive a million dollars? The answer is no. Why? Because you do not have the vessel to carry million dollars. In other words, your vessel is only fifty thousand dollars. If your vessel can only carry fifty thousand dollars, how can your vessel have a million dollars? Because there's no room. So how do you expand your vessel? Is the question that you should be asking? How do I expand my vessel so that I may receive the million dollars? Because you've never seen a million, because you never received a million, your body, your consciousness only knows how to handle fifty thousand dollars. Therefore, you you do not get more than that. You do not get more than what you can handle. So how do you change that? For some of you, it's fifty. For some of you, it's a hundred thousand. Maybe for some of you, it might be hundred fifty, and that's your cap. So how do you change it? Very easy. How you change it? is you change your vessel you enlarge your vessel remember ein sof what's ein sof ein sof was that the universe was created there was no room for for god to reveal himself so what did god do god shrunk shrunk made space shrunk the universe made space and god revealed himself that's called the ein sof so what do you have to do to receive more money uh, wealth substance what you have to do is you have to go to your first you have to go to your let's say in your 4d but before you go to your 4d which is your uh, solution area you want to go to your 5d which is your power area power area 5d okay in your power area i have taught you many times i have given it to you i've given you meditations why have i given you meditations that some of you don't even do them but those of you who do them good but in your meditation is where you prep where you do the prep work where you build yourself up and your mind is calm and relaxed and that is once the prep work is done most billionaires in the world by the way majority of the billionaires in the world do meditation in the morning remember that so you do your meditation that's your prep work then that's a 5d you do your prep work then you come to the 4d what's the 4d the area of solution the area where you want to make a million dollars the area where you want to make 100 million dollars or the area where you want to be a, a rich man or have a house have a car have other things okay so how do we do that how do we do that where that you know you can have a car house other things okay so the way we do that is how do i enlarge my vessel remember what i told you if your vessel is only 50000 you cannot receive a million dollars no it will never happen but if you increase your vessel for a million dollars then even if you earned only 25000 you will get the million dollars because your vessel is now enlarged where do you enlarge your vessel you enlarge it in the 4d in the solution area how you do it first you do the 5d meditation then you go to the 4d you close your eyes and you do power power imagination in your power imagination what you do is this you imagine not necessarily that you have money in the bank no no not necessarily that you suddenly receive million dollars no no that low, low that be low low vibration low vibration okay so what you do unless you are very adept unless you are a master manifester then it's different if you're not a master manifester what you do is you go into your 4d you imagine now you imagine you know raise your vibration how you going to raise your vibration not by seeing money in the bank or by uh purchasing your car or your laptop or other things the way you're going to raise your vibration high high real high let me teach you you're going to give away money simple as that you're going to give away money what you're going to do you're going to imagine that you have received a large sum of money whatever that sum is whatever you desire you put that sum now that's going to enlarge your vessel now if you had a vessel that only carried 50000 now your vessel is in life to carry a million dollars or more so what do you imagine you imagine that you have got a certain large sum of money now you don't need to see the money in the bank you just imagine that you have received let's say is a million dollars let's say you received a million dollars or more then you decide in your imagination to raise your vibration 
your frequency, you're going to say, out of that million dollars, the first person I give money to, and I'll be blunt to you, you give to the rabbi, you give your 20% dues. You say, first person I give my money to is to God. I want to give money to God, what's due to God? What did Jesus say? Give to God, what's due to God? Give to man, what's due to man? Pay your taxes. Okay? So, you're going to give. Of course, you know, if you get any large sum of money, Mr. Taxman's already there. IRS is the first one to get their money. So, they get their money. Well, what about God now? So, you give the money to God. You take your percentage, you give to God. Now, by giving to God, you've already raised your vibration. Sky high. Sky high your vibration is raised. Your vessel is now increased. Your vessel is now saying that I am. I have the ability now to receive... 10 million dollars or 20 million dollars or 50 million dollars now that's what you have said so once you do that you then say to yourself in your imagination you're still in your imagination believing and knowing that you have received the money that you have given the money to god now who are you going to give to maybe you decide that i'm going to buy my mom and dad a house maybe you decide that i'm going to give my mom and dad a car maybe i'm going to give them some money in the bank, whatever that is, the percentage of your money that you received. So let's say, let's say, for argument's sake, that if you received a million, let's we'll, we'll imagine that you received a million dollars. Uh, maybe, maybe, okay. Let's make it. Let's make it three million. You received three million dollars. Okay, you received three million dollars. So you're gonna imagine that out of that three million dollars, you're gonna give your parents. Five percent. What is five percent of your of your money of three million one hundred and fifty thousand dollars? You decided that you want to give one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to your mom and dad. It might be mom and dad, okay? So you you've already you're imagining that you're imagining that that I am giving my parents a gift. You're giving them a check. You're handing them a check and saying, Mom, Mom or Dad, Mom and Dad, here is a one hundred and fifty thousand dollar check for you to use wherever you need to. Okay? You've given money away. Listen. This is a principle. This principle will make you very rich if you follow it. You're giving money away to your, to your parents. Then you might decide in your imagination that I want to give, maybe you decide that I want to give 1%, you know, 1% of my money to, uh, I don't know, maybe some charity. Maybe you want to give it to your sister. Maybe you want to give it to your brother. Maybe you want to give it to your cousin. Maybe you want to give it to the, 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 the poorest person you find on the road. Or maybe even you decide that one day you go to Walmart or Target and you're there and you decide that the first 10 shoppers, the first 10 shoppers that come at the checkout, I want to pay for their groceries. So you do that. You know, you could go into your neighborhood. You could go into your neighborhood where maybe where, you know, uh, people live who are not very, who are not very rich. You know, people of uh, low stature, people with low income. And you go to the neighborhood, you go to the grocery store there, and you stand by the grocery, and you say to the, the checkout person, you say, hey, you know, the first 10 people that come to you today and buy groceries, I want to pay for their groceries with my card. And you decide to do that, and uh, maybe in low project areas, you do, you do that and you start paying money for whoever comes, first 10 people. And you paid money for 10 people, you're going to have 10 people that are so grateful to you. So, so grateful to you. You know, they're going to be like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for helping us, for paying for our grocery, you know, thank you from the bottom of our heart. By doing that, you have raised your vibration whoop, straight up. That's how much vibration you have raised. So you have paid for maybe 10 people's groceries. Maybe it only cost you $1,000. Maybe $100 for each person. Maybe $1,000. For $1,000, look how much vibration you've raised up. Once you've done that, you've given to God, you've given to your, your mom and dad, you've given to the grocery store, to these other people who, who were perhaps needy, and you bought their groceries. And now, now in your imagination, now you're, you're set. Now what you do in your imagination, you're going for a beautiful vacation to the whatever spot you like to go to, whatever spot in the world. You're going in vacation, but you're going first. You're going business class, first class, business class ticket. You buy yourself a business class ticket. You see yourself on the plane, and you say to the to the you know to the steward, air steward on the plane. You say, ma'am, she asks you, sir or madam, what would you like? And you say, well, I'd like uh, a gin and tonic, please. Or maybe you say, I'd like a a pineapple drink, please. Or whatever you you prefer. 
so you take that drink from the air steward air hostess or the whoever it is male or female you take it from them and you you you're going in style to your holiday you're vacating you're not imagining how much money you have in the bank you're actually vacating and that's going to raise your vibration up whoop straight up straight up okay so those two secrets number 1 giving if you don't listen to me at least listen to jesus what he said <laughs> he is trying to teach you a principle number 2 take a nice vacation when you take a nice vacation because you already raised your your vessel your vessel can now carry 100 million dollars let alone 50000 so when your vessel can be raised to 100 million and by you giving by you giving you have now established that you are a giver it is better to give than to receive so of course when you do that you move from your 4d to your 3d then the 4d has to match the 3d the 3d says ah this man this woman is a giver so the money must be given to me to give and so it makes connection with the 4d and the 4d delivers the money by whatever action you need to do whether that is buying a lottery ticket whether that is investing in business or whatever it is whatever you do whatever that action is inspired action or whatever that action is that you sit on your sofa and do whatever you do that action is going to bring in the money to your door that's by the way is going to deliver the money but you're going to do this imaginative act every day the meditation 5d the 4d solution area where you do the imagination power imagination and then the 3d it will turn up over there follow this principle if you follow this principle you will get everything you desire now you're in a position to get everything you desire because when you're in the when you're in the 4d solution area you're going to be imagining and you're going to be touching tasting because when you order that gin and tonic in the plane you pick up the glass and you taste the gin and tonic and you feel the taste in your mouth or it could be maybe it's a cold drink maybe it's a soft drink like pineapple orange juice whatever it is you put it to your mouth and you taste it and you feel it ah orange juice yeah i feel it and your mouth is watering you feel it and so you get that feeling in other words engage engage your touch and to the glass engage your taste buds your tongue to the to the glass that you're drinking and then see the environment you're in in other words you're flying in a plane see yourself flying in the plane so when you've done all of that is this this by the way this imaginative act is not a 30 second it's not a 2 minute it's not a 3 minute this imaginative act should be no less than 15 minutes no less than you're going to be fully fully absorbed in it you're going to continue to repeat it inside you continue to repeat and from deep within you when you're in that situation when you're feeling that you know when you're feeding yourself that drink when you're giving that money to to your mom dad etc to god and to other people you want to be deeply deeply thankful from the bottom of your heart from your tip of your you know from the pit pit of your stomach you want to say thank you god thank you thank you thank you you give gratitude to god thank you that you put me in a position to do this thank you thank you i love you god that you help me today to do this do you know how much i do you know how much i thank god do you know when i when i gave that money to those those two families how much i thank god i thank god that god put me in a position to help those in the most need that i was able to help them to save one one family from losing their total electric by you know having their meter cut and the other family by putting on their food on their table okay i know i know i didn't put a food on their table for a whole year but at least i put it on their table for a month come on you know isn't that a start and i haven't done that for one person i do it for many people it's, not, it's nothing new for me so listen learn from me learn to walk in power when you walk in power people will come to your door listen i didn't call the police to come to my door a whole police squad came to my door whole of them and they sat outside my house and we and i offered them cold drinks they had you know it was a uh, orange juice it was a packet of crisps you know i ordered uh, and then then we 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 fed them these things and you know the policeman was so so happy and the, their their person in charge their leader you know he was a what they call over here is a super uh, not superintendent it was a sho they call it 
uh, which is a special house officer. So he was there and he shook hands with me and he was so happy to meet me. And how does that happen? How does it happen? How many of you get policemen coming to your door and you sit down with you and drinking, you know, cold drinks and being happy with you? How many of you, how, how many of them do that with you? How about none? <laughs> yeah, how about none? <laughs> none. So let's change the scene a little bit. Let's now change it with, where people will be lifting you up. We'll be coming to you and saying, hey, you know, Jack, you know, we want to spend some time with you. Hey, we are here in the area and, uh, you know, we want, want, want to get to know you and all that. Yeah, sure. You know, if I, as a Kohen in the gate, as a Kohen in the gate, I can get policemen to come to my door and have cold drinks and I can get pictures of people just being murdered, just being shot dead, right? I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not in the for and the against party. I was really sad, but the pictures came to me, and uh, they were shown me, and I was like, you know, it's kind of sad, but of course, you know, I want to lift up the family for prayer. You know, lift up the family for prayer for those that are grieving, that, you know, that God will console them. So, at least I can do that. So, my point is this, that this is how you walk in power. It is better to give than to receive. Of course, if you're a giver, God has to deliver to you for in order to give. You can't be a giver without receiving. Automatically you become a receiver. When you are a giver, you will become a receiver. So today, make a covenant with God. Make a covenant with God that I am going to become a giver. And as I become a giver, that I know that you will take care of my needs, every need, and that you will will raise my vessel. You will stretch my vessel that I may receive millions of dollars into my account. And we use them for your glory. And that's how you glorify God. Okay? That's how you do it. You don't go glorify God by just going to church. <laughs> or going to synagogue. You glorify God by doing the things that I'm telling you to do. So this is, if you do them, you will do well. So, I encourage you all to listen to my lecture more than one time. Listen to it. Try to understand the points I made. And you will do well in your life. You will do extremely well. But you must you must increase your vessel. The reason why you have been unsuccessful so far, because your vessel was stuck at whatever thousands of dollars that you made every year. It was stuck at that. But you want to make 10 times that money, maybe 20 times that money, maybe 100 times. So if you want to make 100 times that money, you got to stretch, you got to make your vessel bigger. And the way you make your vessel bigger is in your 4D solution area. You imagine that you have enlarged your vessel that you can receive whatever millions of dollars it is that you desire and that now you're ready to act. And what you're going to do, remember what I told you, don't see yourself shopping in (coughs) Walmart, excuse me, don't see yourself shopping in Walmart uh, and the likes. No, those things are a given that you'll have them. But I want you to see a nice vacation. I want you to see giving money to the people that you should be giving money to, whoever you decided. Because you would have decided beforehand that I want to give my mom and dad something, I want to give my, uh, you know, my my uh, broke cousin something, or I want to give the neighbor down the road something, whatever, you know, you already made up your mind. When you make up your mind, now you're ready to stretch and enlarge your vessel. When your vessel is enlarged in the 4D, my goodness, wonders will start to happen. Things will start to move and shake for you. And when things start to move and shake for you, that is when you'll become that man, that woman, that person that you desire to be. Okay? So, please listen to this carefully. I didn't want to make this a total religious lecture, but don't be like the lame man who, who sat at the pool for 38 years. And 38 years later, he's telling Jesus that, Oh, sorry, sir, rabbi, you know, I couldn't help myself. I was lying over here and nobody helped me. You got to, I have given you the tools to help yourself. I have today given you the tools. You have the tools to help yourself. You have no excuse. If after today you're still making excuses, then you then you should be, you know, God should deal with you in, in, in whatever way he desires. But I am telling you that you are in a prime position now to make do and be the person you want to be in your life. You want to be that man, you want to be that woman who is a, you know, a high profile businesswoman, businessman, you can be that. Now, it's time is for you to be that. I've given you the tools and if you don't exercise those tools, if you don't implement and and 
execute those tools, my goodness, I don't know what to say. Oh, also I didn't tell you. Let me tell you something else by passing through that what the Kohen does at his gate. The Kohen helped release one man from captivity who would have been killed. Listen, killed. He would be dead by next week if I didn't do that. And by the way, I didn't do it for free. In other words, it cost me money to do that. And you don't need to know how much money I paid for him. But I freed a man today. I've sent orders to that man who's holding him captive to let him go. And he told me, he said, he said, son, he speaks very ki- kindly to me, but he speaks very roughly to the other, other man. Because the other man was a gangster. He, he'd done some bad things. And I told this man, I said, listen, listen. I know this man's done some bad things. He stole your, your gold. And I, I know I'm not in favor of that. But listen, let him go. Let him go. Let him have another chance. And he said to me, hey, unless you give me this much, I won't let him go. I said, okay, we will arrive at a deal. You let him go, and then he can pay you the money back. And he said, no, I don't trust this man. This man will run away and not pay me the money. But I trust you. I don't trust him. So I said, okay, I will take in charge of that man's responsibility I will pay the money and that that man will pay me back but let him go let him live you know he made a mistake he regrets his mistake he is swearing that he won't do it again that he you know will pay the money so I said let him go and he still wouldn't let him go so I said okay I told that man hey you you talk to me direct are you going to pay the money to me so I can pay this man back he said yes I will pay you I swear uh, by the by the prophet I swear by the Quran I said no I said I want you to swear by your mother that gave you birth because you haven't seen the prophet of Islam and you have you may read the Quran but some a lot of you people lie against the Quran you read the holy book and you lie I said no I said you are going to swear by the mother that gave you birth if you don't do you will be a dead man he said I swear by my mother who gave me birth that I will return the money. So I said, okay, today you bought yourself your life. So I led that man in the north, by the way, he's from the tribes. I I let him live and I gave the ransom for him. And I said, let him go, let that man live. And bro Hashem, tomorrow he'll be free. You got to be big in your in your shoes. Don't just talk yappity, 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 yap. You know, do the deeds, do the deeds before you call yourself a Hebrew. Don't just call yourself a Jew and and you do all the wrong things. If you want to call yourself a Jew, then do the deeds of a Jew. Do the deeds of a righteous Jew that you may be rewarded by God above. You know, that's how you should live. And if you don't live like that, then you're wasting your time. Like I said to you, you're wasting your time. You want to just be, you know, this dancing and singing Christian, but don't do the deeds, then it's a waste of time. Do the deeds. God will reward you. Do the deeds. I have to save three three lives this week. Not three. Actually, there was a whole family behind two families and one one life. No, two three lives. The, the stories get bigger. I haven't got time to give you all the stories. But know this: at least at least this week alone, uh, three plus one four plus four eight plus three uh, four five six. Plus one, 15 people, at least 15 people have found life through me. Okay? I am proud of myself. I give thanks to God that my mother was a righteous woman who gave birth to me, that I may be able to do a righteous deed that will glorify God. How many of you are going to walk in my shoes? Listen, rise up. Rise up and you might be, be similar to similar or even close to me to walk like I do. I don't think you'll ever walk like me because how many of you are going to get your doctor or dentist to give you, you know, open his clinic at 11.30 at night and offer you tea and biscuits and give you treatment? <laughs> how many of you are going to do that? None. How about none? <laughs> so, sorry, you know, I'm, I'm only, I'm not teasing you. I'm just giving you facts on the ground. Facts on the ground is that in order to walk in power, you must be sincere to God. You must be sincere to Torah. You must be a covenant man or woman. If you are a covenant man or woman, God will give you the power. God will let you walk in power. You will glorify God and you will be a proud person for yourself. I want to encourage you. 
I want to, you know, be the man, be your teacher to encourage you in these things. I want you to succeed. Why am I telling you this? Because I want you to succeed. You cannot be a failure. You cannot be here and be a failure. It is unacceptable for you to be a failure. It is unacceptable for you to give up and say, ah, it's just not happening for me. No, you cannot give up. You cannot be a failure. You are going to be a success and you're going to walk in power. Baruch Hashem. So I give thanks. Abba, I give you thanks. I lift up your name. And for all the people that are listening, Abba, I bestow your power upon them, that they walk in power, that they get their desires met, and they do the righteous deeds that our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did, that we may glorify your name, especially our father Abraham. How you open up his doors for everybody. I thank you, Father, that just like Abraham, my father, I open up my doors. And Father, I thank you for the power that you've given me. I, I, I thank you, Father, for all these students, that you give them power, you give them strength, you give them perseverance, and they all become very successful in their lives, in their, in their relationships, in their uh, business life, in their employment life, that they become very, very successful and very powerful, and they become righteous individuals that people are proud of. I thank you. I bless your holy name. Amen, we amen. May God guide you and keep you safe. May God look after you and may He surround you with angels wherever you go that you may be protected and guided in all your ways. Thank you. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Also the latest news that came that Yemen, they landed a helicopter almost in Hollywood movie style on one of the uh, ships that was going to Israel to deliver goods, freight ship, and they hijacked that ship worth billions of dollars probably of goods. And, uh, and that just goes to prove that, <clears throat> as I said earlier, that Israel, as a tiny nation, is not in a capability to fight the whole world. So get this idea out of your head. Those of you who live in cuckoo land, who think that Israel can fight everybody, that is not true. Israel can only win the battles when God is with Israel. Not when America is with Israel, by the way. Let me point that out. Not when America is with Israel. God, when He is with Israel, then Israel can win the battles. When God is not there, Israel is going to get a real kicking and a real licking. And that's what's happening right now. And maybe that's a, you know, that that's maybe a, something to think about, something to think about of what kind of policies, what kind of things they've done, and uh, whether, you know, the whole nation needs to seek God. How about that? The whole nation needs to seek God, not just one or two people. And the leadership, where you already know how, how right-wing and uh, fascist, I would go to say, some of them, not all of them, but some of them are almost fascist with their, with their behavior and their policies. And that I do, do not believe for a second that God allows that kind of thing to continue forever. He will not allow that. He will humble these people. And that's what's happening now. So with that, once again, I humbly ask you to petition for all peoples. And this includes Israel and this includes everybody else. And also petition for the restoration of the 12 tribes and for the rebuilding of the, or re-establishment, I should say, re-establishment of the third temple and the service to God. Baruch Hashem, may God praise forever. Amen, we amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. Shabbat Shalom.